Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. If anyone went to the gym three days a week and done heavy squats, bench press, and weighted pull-ups, uh, what sort of imbalances would you expect? Uh, it's going to vary from person to person. What you need to understand when it comes to imbalances, one person is going to develop a different amount of muscle growth proportionate off of the bench press than another person will. Okay, due to leverages, genetics, everything else. Uh, as far as imbalances I see off of just using such a minimalist program, I would never ever advocate even in the most minimalist program only doing three exercises. Um, I've told people that in the past that if someone really wanted to run a minimalist system, five to six exercises is your, is your minimal. Right? And that's only for people who have serious time constraints or for novice lifters. Or for anyone else, that shouldn't even be an option. So what muscle imbalances would I expect off doing just those three lifts immediately? Hamstrings, glutes, spinal erectors, traps, medial delts, possibly posterior delts, right? That's going to be right, right off the bat. Probably triceps too, unless you're a very, very, very tricep dominant bench presser. This is very, very anterior dominant training. Okay, this is very anterior dominant. This is very much pec, front, delt, quad. Your, your entire posterior chain is being very seriously restricted with just these three exercises. A lot of your shoulder girdle is being seriously undertrained. Because what you need to understand, you, I don't think you realize how many pull-ups you would need to do to really build your rear delts and traps and things effectively. As I, I mean, that's a perfect example. Uh, I'm not saying pull-ups don't work these things, but if you look at the data that's there, just, just look at rows in comparison to a pull-up and regarding posterior delts, traps, things like that. Barbell rows literally get double the muscle fiber recruitment in those muscles literally double double weighted pull-ups are phenomenal for your abs for your lats they're great for grip training great for biceps but they don't actually work all of the muscles even in the upper back nearly as well as a lot of other lifts do and don't get me wrong pull-ups are great pull-ups are great exercise I think they're fantastic exercise definitely high on my list of good exercises they don't work your back completely your traps are going to be neglected your rear delts are going to be neglected on that unless you're doing enormous amounts of them I don't just mean you know 10 sets a week you have to do a lot of them to really get your rear delts to grow because it doesn't hit those areas as hard as we would like Definitely your side delts not going to get much carrier. We could argue that rows and face pulls and stuff will hit your side delts pretty well. Pull-ups don't. Your erectors are going to be weak. Thoracic erectors, spinal erectors, your hamstrings. So you're also potentially setting yourself up for knee injuries because of being too anterior dominant. Shoulder injuries from being too anterior dominant. You're going to have imbalances. You can get pretty big, pretty strong doing just those three lifts if you put a ton of work into them. But you're not going to be balanced and you're not going to be anywhere near as athletic as you should be. You're not going to be as strong as you should be. All right, next question. I've noticed that your opinion on lifts and conditioning has evolved over the years. Uh, what's your opinion on forms of HIT as a health slash fitness tool? Um, mixed feelings on HIT. Mixed feelings on HIT, like what we would think of as a traditional HIT, which is just going to be interval training, right? So you could be doing sprints, you could be intervals on a bike, whatever, that would be HIT. Now, obviously, we know that I am not big on lifts. I think the investment versus the payoff is extremely low. I think doing lifts when in a calorie deficit causes muscle loss, it did for me, cause significant muscle loss, even with a small deficit. Um, I don't think it's a good fat loss tool accordingly. It's just it's a misallocation of resources. As far as HIT goes, HIT's probably a lot better. Now, where I think people mess up with HIT, my opinion is that when they think that it builds muscle. 
because the data we've seen has generally shown it doesn't really build muscle for people who resistance train. It doesn't. It causes sometimes some extra inflammation that is water. When we measure it, it turned out to just be water in the muscle tissue. So any muscle growth that people got from HIT later studies have generally shown that it tends to just be fluid retention. Uh, will it get you in better shape, though? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, if you needed some sort of conditioning work, um, you know, again, something like just hill sprints, right, as a form of hit, or hit on your bike, will it help your cardiovascular system and your conditioning? Yes, absolutely. Do you got to balance your recovery of your, your training around it? Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, so as far as my views on it go, it depends on what a lifter needs or what an athlete needs. I tend to be inclined in the direction of Metcon work. Why? Because Metcon work can build a small amount of muscle. It does have a strength component. And we're getting a lot of the benefits we would get from HIT. But does that mean that Metcon is the only thing an athlete should do? No, there are pl clearly plenty of athletes who will still benefit from doing HIT. Uh, what do you mean? Like a boxer, a fighter? Yeah, absolutely. I, if, I mean, you talk about athletes who, who would really, really benefit from doing some HIT. A lot of combat sport athletes, particularly someone like a boxer. I mean, that's that's going to be very beneficial to them. Because they could build the conditioning of the HIT based around their time in the ring. Okay, You can be very, very sport-specific with HIT for an athlete like that. I'm not talking about just doing random cardio. I'm talking about literally building the HIT around their time in and out of the ring as far as the ring time versus out. Okay, you, They could time their intervals and their training around that. Make them quite efficient in, in you know, stamina as far as a fight. So for you know athletes like that, hit not only a good tool, it's po possibly a superior tool. Right? It worked very well for them. For people who are trying to maximize muscle mass, and strength, I think that there are better forms of cardio to do more in the in the realm of uh, Metcon type work, right? That are resistance based conditioning, to where your time flowing through different parts of the body instead of just say doing the legs like sprinting or a bike. That we use to keep heart rate up and get conditioning up with a resistance component. It's going to be a higher level of resistance than the hit would be for the individual muscles. Uh, probably be a better choice for them. So, like with, with any other tool, here's what I would say. The, the tool that you use needs to be a, very appropriate to your goals. Okay? And I just gave you two examples of regular hit versus Metcon of who might do better on one versus the other. Your conditioning work needs to be somewhat specific to what you're trying to achieve. Okay? It needs to be specific to what you're trying to achieve. Just like any other tool... Try to pick the best tool for the job. And you may not get it right, but if you put some thought into it, you're going to be better than if you just do random stuff, in my opinion. All right, next question and last question of the week. Jason, what's your opinion on collision or combat sports athletes throwing in some direct neck work to reduce injury risk? Completely useless or does it have its place? Cheers. Uh, I think the answer to this one is pretty clear. It's pretty well documented in the scientific literature. Okay. And what we need to be clear on is that doing any significant amount of neck training carries a health risk. Okay, That's the point we need to make up front. Not everybody should be doing neck work. And multiple MDs who lift have chimed in on this. I've seen everyone from Dr. Feigenbaum to Dr. Isriatel have chimed in and said, neck work, hypertrophy through neck work can cause sleep apnea. Okay, Sleep apnea is an actual health risk. So if you're doing just direct neck work because you just want a bigger neck, you might be compromising your health potentially. So you've got to decide of, do you want your health to suffer? Is your health and your longevity more important to you than having a big neck? That's what you would ask at that point, right? Like, are you willing to die young to have a bigger neck? Now, if someone says yes to that and then they tell me they don't use anabolics, I don't get that. It's like... Why would you inflict the effects of anabolics on your body and the health risk and, you know, just to get a bigger neck when you could just have a bigger body in general for the same risk? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> but 
I digress over to, over to the point. Uh, there are health risks. However, getting concussions and neck injuries and breaking your neck is worse than sleep apnea. We have decent data at this point showing that direct neck training reduces concussions in combat sports and football players. Okay, So I think the answer is pretty clear to that. I think it's very clear. If you're going to be a boxer, an MMA fighter, football player, rugby player, you probably need to do some direct neck work to reduce your chance of concussion because brain damage and, and neck injuries are very, very, very serious and they're very common in those sports. So you can go ahead and compromise your health a little bit to ensure something more important. You're, you're, you don't get brain damage, right? It's a lesser of two evils, so it makes sense in that case. It makes sense in that case. They, they probably need to do it. And it's not that it won't potentially have negative effects. They're just reducing the risk of something worse. That's the nature of, of combat sports. They're dangerous. They're risky. They're going to carry risk. There's no way around that. You accept that when you engage in them. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.